that's the end. Really strengthen up background checks. We have to do that. And we have to do, for the mentally ill, we have to do very, very, we don't want people that are mentally ill to be having any form of weaponry. We have to be very strong on that. So we're going to do that, and I really believe that Congress is going to get it through this time. And they have a different leader. They have somebody that wants to get it through, not somebody that just all talk, no action, like so many of these folks. This is somebody that wants to get it through. But I also want to protect. We need a hardened site. It has to be hardened. It can't be soft, because they'll sneak in through a window. Mm -hmm. All righty. Uh, so the president there putting this out. Some teachers are pushing back on it. But what he's saying is that those who have the propensity and the training, the openness to learn uh, to use a weapon, he wants to see that. What are your thoughts? It's great to put ideas out there and to have a discussion that is more than what the typical debate is, which moves no Americans, which Marie Side will immediately say, let's ban guns. Re Republicans will say, there's no need to ban guns because the way we are secure is by being able to protect ourselves. And the president says, let's talk about some other ideas. Let's have a discussion. Mm -hmm. Here is one part of the discussion that's not happening. And as an organization that focuses governors together and go one way. You've got many Midwestern state governors and their state legislatures are going a different way and giving uh, Americans more of an opportunity to protect themselves through the Second Amendment. So while we have a big national discussion going on, there is equally important mm -hmm. what's happening at the state level. Otherwise, we have this patchwork of what's happening across the country. You, you know, Trish, what's interesting, and I'm so glad that you kind of pointed out the difference there between what the president is calling for and what others are quoting him as calling for. He's not saying put guns in the hands of every teacher, uh, but those who would be open to the, to the uh, training and also bump maybe a little bonus in their way too. Your thoughts? Look, I, I feel for teachers right now. I think schools are obviously a pretty scary place to be. If you are someone that is trained in a firearm, really trained, uh, you should be able to protect yourself and the kids. That said, Harris, my concern in all of this is that is this now going to become a job requirement for a teacher? And I know people say, oh, it's not going to go that far, but does the school board or this principal say, oh, Harris, buy teaching yeah. and mm -hmm. you know if, if leave the security to the people that are good at All right, security let's stop right and there the sheriff's deputy who we now know and it was interesting at that town hall on cnn that sheriff israel didn't volunteer this information i don't know when he learned it but i have to think they looked at the tapes outside that school before two nights ago mm -hmm. i don't know seems common sense to me but a sheriff's deputy, armed, ready, stood out for four minutes. They've got the videotape. Yeah, he didn't go in. So sometimes you can have the training, and then what happens? Right. So, fog of war. look, I mean, if we have to do what Israel does, so be it. These are our children. These Not Sheriff our Israel, future. but the nation. Yes, forget the, the nation of Israel. Yeah. We need to take this seriously. And... I don't care if you put it, you know, we have U.S. Marshals on flights. Exactly. So we need U.S. Marshals in classrooms. No parent should ever have to deal with what those parents are dealing with. And the parent, the, the father that got up there and said, look, this, there never should have been another school shooting after mm -hmm. Columbine, was right. He was absolutely right. And I don't know what it's going to take. It's probably going to take a lot of money. Um, mm -hmm. But that's just money. And we can't risk those lives. Well, you have a president who also is the law and order president who says we need to enforce It is a disaster. You talk to anybody who lives there, and even in the safest neighborhoods, and it's frightening. So there's a bigger conversation to be had here, but it is amazing to watch this president in a 90-minute speech to a conservative audience and getting cheers mm -hmm. when talking about changing gun control laws in this country. 
there's this is obviously a turning point, mm -hmm. David. Sandra, you heard me last week when I joined you and Bill and talked about how the Secretary of Education needs to become the Secretary of Education Security. And the president needs to direct Betsy DeVos to find every outdated, outmoded, ineffective education program, get rid of it, and put it into school security. And make sure that when we talk about having individuals in to protect, why don't we make sure guns aren't getting in? Because today it was an assault rifle. But it, any, is it any worse next, next year if someone comes in with a revolver and shoots six, six children? Or, no, it's or not. an explosive it's equal, device. I mean, we, we, we're talking device. about guns, but what about those other things that uh, they're not regulated because they don't exist until somebody makes it? Schools well, are some of the least secure buildings we have in this but country. But we're also just focusing a lot on schools here, and I understand why. But this last year, we've had a church shooting, uh, the concert shooting in Las Vegas. We've talked a lot about how, because of our... freedoms in America, there are a lot of soft targets, whether it's malls, whether it's con It is, it is a bigger question than just securing our, our schools. It's a larger question about mental health, about gun regulation. Having governors now being willing to say, let's up the age to 21, that's one thing that's happening at some state level. Uh, all right, but it's I don't think that that would have changed the situation at the church shooting. No one policy will have been able to prevent every single tragedy Absolutely, that's happened, yeah. and that can't be the standard for policy making. So, but if it can make it harder for one crazy person to get a gun, if they're under the age of 21. So we should, look, but we should also look but at. I, I happen to think we should look at category. high capacity magazines. The reason for I example. say this is not just to push back, just to be prickly about it. I, I say it, prickly pear. <laughs> That's my nickname at home. Uh, I say it because if we let things get so big, we don't do anything, and right. that's kind of what we're known for. In our politics, we just get so big. We try to cram in so much that the one thing that we could do, we don't get done. Uh, the teachers' union is pressing against mm -hmm. arming teachers. Let's look at their quote, if we can, if we can pop that up on the screen. Uh, we don't want to be, and would. Can we scroll forward? I don't think they're paying attention. Would can we scroll forward? I don't think they're paying attention. There will be Republicans who lose elections this year because of this year, and there will be Democrats who lose elections this year because of this year's year. If you think that Joe Manchin or John Tester or Joe Donnelly could come out against the Second Amendment and support many of the things that Chuck Schumer is going to want them to support, they will lose their seats in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Senate. Just as there will be some Republicans in suburban districts who could lose their, their seats because of this issue. Uh, but it's let, a very let me push you uh, on that a little bit. Sure. Justice Scalia wrote, "The Second Amendment is not unlimited." You Republicans, and you just did it, like to say any re gun restrictions that Democrats want to put forward is quote against the Second Amendment. That is not the case. You can be a supporter of the Second Amendment and also say maybe we shouldn't have high magazine clips. For example, appeals courts in this country have routinely upheld state-level assault weapons bans. So it's not fair in the conversation to say Democrats who want gun regulation are against the Second Amendment. That is not fair, and it's disingenuous. Well, Murray, we, uh, go, go, pack, it, <laughs> go pack will pay right. for you to travel to any state and advise a Democratic senator I'll take that. in I'll West take, Virginia, take Montana, <laughs> Indiana to advise a Democratic senator to be against the Second Amendment. But they're not against, this is my point, you just made my point. Being for common sense gun reform is not anti Second Amendment. And by the way, there <laughs> and there, it's a complete rebuke of Hillary Clinton from just a year ago. I, I think Dude. they are trying to move away from Hillary Clinton, according to what Marie just well, said. Well, it's a big Sandra. conversation that's being had mm -hmm. on this couch and across the country right now, and you just saw it there at CPAC. Yep. question is what sort of action will actually take place while this debate is still so hot. Mm -hmm. uh, great question. We don't know that today.
All right. We will come back to this topic a little bit later in the hour. The president spent some time on it today. Also at CPAC, President Trump used some of his strongest language yet on immigration and his border wall. The warning he's sending to Democrats. And the president announced what he calls the largest ever set of sanctions on North Korea. What the new sanctions aim to do and whether they can succeed where others have failed. We'll talk about it. Stay close. individuals purchasing firearms to be 21 or older. Let me repeat, we will require all individuals purchasing firearms to be 21 or older. Governor Scott says he is also calling for providing millions to keep students safe, including putting mandatory law enforcement officers in every public school. And now for the first time, we're hearing Nicholas Cruz in his own words talk about his emotions three months before 17 people were killed. He called Palm Beach County dispatchers back in November after getting into a fight with the people he was staying with following his mother's death. Listen. I kind of got mad and I started punching walls and stuff and then a kid came at me and threw me on the ground and he started attacking me and, and he kicked me out of the house and he said he was going to me thing is I lost my mother a couple of weeks ago. replaced in its severity and death toll by what happened here just nine days ago. Stone and Douglas with 17 people killed by the alleged attacker, Nicholas Cruz. Well, the strategy now is if guns start firing bullets inside of a school, all officers responding immediately storm the hallways and classrooms and engage the suspect. And according to the sheriff, he actually has school surveillance videotape from the cameras mounted around the building, supporting what he said yesterday, that this school resource officer basically uh, got to a doorway, heard the bullets, and didn't go in. It was just nine days ago, as I mentioned, those helicopter aerials showing students and teachers fleeing from this high school uh, as terror and panic and 150 bullets unloaded in about three minutes inside the school. And now Scott Peterson, who was on the force for about 30 plus years, and just four years ago was awarded school resource officer of the year. First, he was suspended by the sheriff yesterday afternoon, and then Peterson just resigned and retired as he can do. Uh, the sheriff told the President Trump once again touched on what happened here in Parkland and specifically about the inaction and failure by the school resource officer to go in, even though he was holding his own weapon packed full of gun, uh, packed full of uh, ammunition, but did nothing. Take a listen to the president. When it came time to get in there and do something, he didn't have the courage or something happened. But he certainly did a poor job. There's no question about that. He was there for five minutes, for five minutes. That was during the entire shooting. He heard it right at the beginning. So he certainly did a poor job. But that's a case where somebody was outside. They're trained. They didn't react properly under pressure or they were coward. It was a real shot to the police department. And this morning, 
And this morning, the very first teachers returned to their classrooms nine days after this horrible massacre. Uh, teachers were voluntarily allowed back into the school today to retrieve any personal items they may have left behind as they fled their classrooms and buildings in terror on Valentine's Day. Things like purses, cell phones, briefcases. On Monday and Tuesday, teachers will be here for an official planning day. Then on Wednesday, On Wednesday, support staff to deal with what will be undoubtedly a flood of emotions this Sunday and into next week. Phil thank Keating you. in Parkland, Florida for us. Thank you. Well, Fox News alert for you. Tightening the news on North Korea. President Trump at CPAC announcing what may be the toughest sanctions yet on the rogue regime, ratcheting up the pressure on the North to give up its nuclear weapons programs. Watch. North Korea, we impose today the heaviest sanctions ever imposed on a country before. And frankly, hopefully something positive can happen. We will see. But hopefully something positive can happen. But that just was announced, and I want to let you know, we have imposed the heaviest sanctions ever imposed. As we get more details on these sanctions, they are expected to be aimed at more than 50 ships and shipping companies used to fund the North's nuclear program and its military. Certainly, David, the president talking tough there on North Korea. What do you think? If our joint activities with South Korea doesn't have the North Korean leader all worked up saying he's going to get his uh, missiles going again, then certainly these sanctions will. But we're, we're only left with a few options here if we want to make. here if we want to make and yet they're still trading with the North Koreans as are the Russians by the way mm -hmm. so we need to get serious about how we are approaching China we have um, obviously a very big economic relationship with them we don't need to have one mm -hmm. Right? I mean, that will hurt them mm -hmm. more than it will hurt us. And maybe then they'll start to get a clue and they'll understand how seriously we think the North Korea situation. Mm -hmm. Harris? Yeah. You know, I, I'm starting to suspect that China just doesn't want to share that category. that category. For that category. that category. For that category.